of our institute. Good morning, good afternoon. We should understand that the virus-associated cancers that was uh, uh, discovered uh, by Kate and Rouse in animals as early as in 1911, and they are not typical of uh, human. Uh, so there are not that many of them, their numbers. And uh, if we think about them, if we think about pathologists that are exotic, well, carpacha uh, sarcoma, it's typical of immune deficiency or some other rather. Uh, Leukosis uh, could be associated, and relatives of HIV virus cause them. A real probable exclusion is uh, uh, associated with the tumors caused by HPV. Uh, we can speak, speak about family of papilloma virus, uh, but the uh, history is associated with the discovery of cervical cancer of its virus nature. And here we should understand that when we speak about uh, uh, cervical cancer, it's not a very usual situation because uh, uh, for more long, many infectious uh, sciences, let's say, and scientists, uh, uh, they were looking for direct reason or connection uh, between the aging pathogen and the manifestation. Papilloma viruses, they're conditionally pathogenic microorganism in the majority of people. They do not cause any pathological manifestations, and more than that, uh, factors that uh, could promote uh, manifestation of path pathogenicity. I mean that uh, one human, one uh, person develops uh, it, another one does not. Such factors are not known completely. We should understand that papilloma virus infections, uh, taking into account our style of life in uh, industrial countries, 90 percent of of uh, people uh, have transitory papilloma infection over comet. If we speak about 20, 30 years of age, reproductive activity age, and 30 percent of examined uh, people of this age had uh, this virus, and the majority of people immunity manages to uh, cope with it. On, only in 5, 10 percent of men and women, papilloma virus uh, uh, exists uh, uh, during uh, their life. Although it could be connected with the immune system specificities or could be connected with something. We do not understand why some people uh, have transitory infection and others it persists, it's chronic. Uh, infection and uh, another thing, even when it's chronic, uh, the majority of people will be healthy uh, with this chronic one, and only in some part oncological disease will develop. The reasons are not well underst understandable. All uh, those things create uh, difficulty for difficulties for vaccination programs. We do not know about the risk of chronization, papilloma virus infection to get it high, but uh, the risk of chronic chronization, uh, what is the risk uh, uh, regarding the connection of chronic stage and uh, development of cancer. That's why speaking about vaccination, uh, we understand that minimal part uh, of uh, uh, immunized people, they get some uh, sense and essence uh, in uh, the majority of people, this immunization uh, does not does not give expected result. How papilloma virus cause uh, uh, cancers? As, uh, we have papilloma virus that replicate itself in the cells of human papilloma vi virus. Uh, there are genes that are necessary for for, he for it for replication. Part of them uh, they are called the E6E sim. Early 
uh, genes, this is uh, their function in the life cycle of the virus, so they are oncogenic. Uh, what is their role? Uh, the role of oncogenes is that oncogenes E6 and E7 uh, the, uh, could be connected with the uh, suppressors proteins. Uh, uh, they link with them, bind with them, that usually prevent transformation of normal epithelial cells. The first cell line that was get from immunological patient, uh, cell line of cervical cancer from American patient, uh, Henrietta Lacks, Uh, there was papilloma virus because, because all cervical cancers are caused by uh, papilloma virus. And uh, uh, this cell line was used uh, uh, recently. It was shown that uh, E6, E7 proteins play key role in uh, pathogenic of uh, malignant transformation more than that in, in, in activation of uh, the proteins uh, result in normalization of the prototypes of cancer cells. So they inactivated E6, E7 proteins and they noticed that the tumor cells stop being that malignant. Theoretically speaking, we can expect some therapeutic approaches um, derived from that, but as a matter of fact at the moment, there are no prospects or prosperous attempts to actually develop an antagonist of E6, E7. What is the function of the proteins? First of all, they bind with most well-known suppressor proteins, which exercise the role, certain role in the pathogenesis of any malignancy at all. In the norm, in our cells, we have a program incorporated, which allows the cell to respond to the suppressor signals. If the cells are too many, then the body system actually rec recognizes it as excessive growth and sends the signal for the cell to stop uh, uh, just to uh, stop deleting. Uh, so uh, this is the situation when RB, retinoblastoma protein, was discovered when uh, we uh, studied actually um, retinoblastoma in children. So the gene that, uh, an activation gene which causes RB, in fact, was called retinoblastoma. RB, of course, exercises a role in the pathogenesis of RB, but it's a universal gene because it stops the uh, cell coming through the cell uh, cycle. So if we have signals from outside that requires stopping the cell line or the cell just um, cycle, then retinoblastoma uh, in fact uh, promotes uh, the cell to continue the cell. If it is a papillomavirus infected cell, and the, the viral oncogene E7 would be expressed. And this particular protein is uh, binds to the RB cell. And the cell has an opportunity to go through the cell cycle uh, absolutely with no barrier. The next position, <clears throat> I've talked about E7. Now let's speak about E6, which is an onca protein as well. As a matter of fact, all these cells uh, are, have a particular lifespan. So an apoptosis is, an is a process of elimination. It's a normal component of uh, regulating the cell mass, and it's a protective mechanism not to have the tumor or some malformation. Uh, that is why the P53 protein uh, exercises the key role in the uh, programmed cell uh, death. As a matter of fact, uh, one f uh, um, a half of all the tumors has an activation of B P3, and that's why the tumor cells are formed, because they cannot die. The cells cannot die uh, due to this programmed uh, death or programmed cycle. So P 53, if it is activated, then the cell becomes immortal. 
it continues living on and the signal of death doesn't come to it or doesn't work. So what should we understand at this basic science? When we studied the mechanism of oncogenesis, we understood that um, papilloma virus infection and uh, uh, P53 and retinoblastoma gene mutation, these are reciprocal events. If the cell is infected with papilloma virus, then mutation in the genes of retinoblastoma or P3 doesn't happen. It's not needed. There is a papilloma virus, then P53 is activated, and RB1, because of the oncoproteins of papilloma virus, or if there is no papilloma virus in the cell, there is another mechanism of transformation, then these particular proteins are activated in the uh, course of mutation. Another very important uh, but then, uh, uh, mechanism is non-restricted uh, replicative potential. It's uh, very frequently named after its author, Leonard Heiflick, a prominent American scientist who invested a lot into the development of contemporary medicine. For example, for half a year he works in the Soviet Union in order to help uh, Soviet vi virologists to develop the vaccine against poliomyelitis. Poliomyelitis vaccine, in fact, was available in the United States, but the United States didn't want to spend uh, currency for uh, recruitment. That's why uh, Leonard Heiflick worked with the Soviet scientists in the territory of the Soviet Union. As a result, we uh, developed our own vaccine uh, of poliomyelitis. Oh, he also had access to the uh, leaders of the country, for example, Leonid Elyzy Brezhnev. And, uh, for example, he helped several dissidents to leave the country. He actually wrote letters to Brezhnev, and uh, as he was needed to the Soviet Union very much, they actually listened to him. But as a matter of fact, his particular discovery had a side effect. Why did he do? He tried to um, cultivate normal cells, and he paid attention to a, a wonderful thing, that they can actually um, multiply in culture, but the normal cells, they have approximately 80 to 90 multiplications, and then they stop. And in the tumor, they continue growing untimely. So this restricted number of replications or replicative potential restriction is actually what we call a high flick limit. And here we have a petty detail. How is this implemented? I didn't want to go into the um, depth of molecular biology, but just believe me that in the normal cell, every chromosome with every particular replication is shortened several uh, dozens of nucleotides, which is related to the DNA replication mechanism for the uh, polymerase DNA to bind to the chain and to initiate the synthesis. We need very short uh, startup um, sort of period. These are several dozens of nucleotides. They're not, they do not replicate, and they die out with every new cycle. The chromosome becomes shorter with every new replication cycle. And when it reaches the critical mass, the cell actually stops replicating, and that's it. The tumor cells, or the so-called stem cells, they have another mechanism. They have a polymerase enzyme, which actually uh, restores the loop. And that means that the, the normal cell actually shortens the chromosome with every replication, but in the tumor cell, because the telomerase is activated, the shortening doesn't happen in the chromosome. And thanks to this mechanism, the tumor cells, unlike the normal ones, have unrestricted replication potential. What does the papillomavirus do? It activates telomerase, and it brings the tumor cells a chance to continue replicating um, completely, um, just uh, almost forever. That means it is uncontrolled replication. The, the apoptose cannot be programmed and they can 
replicates unlimited, which is related to the papillomavirus proteins, and that's exactly how the HPV impacts the cells. And uh, just the final two slides, if you look at the cervical case, um, cancer, then uh, in many ways, thanks to the fact that uh, in the Western countries they have good screening and vaccination is very popular, the mortality of from cervical cancer in the developed countries, in fact, becomes significantly lower. The cervical cancer is more typical of the developing countries, and in the developed countries, in the industrial countries, the trend is different. If we speak about the cervical cancer, is more or less uh, done away with, but other tumors associated with papillomavirus, for example, the uh, head and neck cancers, uh, penile cancers, uh, anal cancer, these are the tumors which in many cases are related to the papillomaviruses. They are socially significant. We should understand that if we speak about head and neck cancers, then the majority are related to smoking. If we speak about papillomavirus, then it's actually um, typical of just the number of uh, cancers for non-smokers. If we speak about penile and uh, anal cancers, the, the majority of cancers, they lie within the HPV-infected uh, population. Thank you. We have time.